So, I picked up my friend Jason's wife's new 24 underground gray TRD off-road forerunner from the airport while they're on vacation. He wanted a little lift put on it. So we are going to do a little rough country spacer lift on it that he picked up and put his Icon wheels and 285 70 tires on it. And uh, should be sweet. God, I love working on brand new cars. This underground gray is just so cool. I uh, had seen them on the lots, but I hadn't had an opportunity to stop and actually like look at one and myself up close in person. And boom, got her up on jack stands. You guys have watched me do these before. If you haven't, welcome to the channel. So um, this is his wife's daily driver. They are going for the aesthetic, not necessarily for the off-road capabilities. So they're just going with a rough country spacer lift. Two inch for the front, one inch for the rear. Um, if you don't know, the thickness of this spacer doesn't exactly correlate to the amount of lift that you get due to the nature of an independent suspension with a double arm, double A arm design. So that one inch or whatever it is, inch and a 16th, equivalents to two inches of lift on the front and the rear though directly correlates. So that exact one inch is what you're gonna get in the back. So um, yeah, two and one lift kit, pretty simple, especially when your vehicle is this new. Um, the way that I typically do these because the vehicle needs a complete alignment when you're done anyway, is I will remove the two bolts that are coming up in the bottom here from the A-arm. I'll remove the lower strut bolt and then loosen the control arm bolts, marking where they are now, swing the arm down out of the way, then undo the upper strut bolts. You can lower the strut, pull it out of there, install the uh, spacer adapter on there, slide it back up, bolt it into place, bolt everything back up. When I'm all done, I always loosen the upper control arm bolts as well and tighten the upper control arm bolts as well as the lower control arm bolts with the weight of the vehicle sitting on the ground so that all the bushings are tightened at their center point at ride height. That way there's no preload on the bushings. Um, if you don't do that, you'll get premature premature bushing wear. And uh, I've been doing that. I've had many people ride in my personal truck, which has a spacer lift on it. And they're like, wow, after I did the spacer lift, my truck rides like crap. What one did you use? Why, is, did you, why does yours ride so good? That's the difference. No extra preload on them rubber bushings. Translates to a whole lot less pressure on your suspension and uh, much longer lasting components. So anyway, I'm going to get started. So as you can see, the existing stud sticks above our spacer by a tiny bit, which stinks. That means we need to thread the nuts on here, cut these off, and then um, take the nuts off, then put the spacer back on and tighten it all up. But um, you don't want the weight of your suspension pushing against those studs, even if they're tight, you want even pressure around this whole upper deal. So we'll do that and then uh, bolt them back down and put the assembly in. But yeah, not too bad of a job. So the reason we put the nut on first is so that when you take the nut back off, it straightens up the threads where you just cut it. So you got a good starting point. If you cut it without the nut on and then you try to thread your nut on afterwards, a lot of times you can't because the threads are all galled up from, from when you cut it. So um, yeah, just 
good practice to get into. Um, save you a lot of frustration. Then we take our strut spacer, line it up using the factory bolts. So we'll get those tightened down and then we'll uh, put it back together. So on this vehicle, we're also installing a differential drop. It's uh, pretty much as easy as taking out the bolts that hold the front differential to the cross member. There's two of them, one on either side. Installing these spacers right there between the two. And then uh, putting them back together with the new supplied hardware and torquing it all up. And then they give you spacers uh, for the front skid plate to um, hold it down away from those uh, front brackets. So yeah, no big deal. Just uh, taking care of that while we're under here. And um, not, supposedly not totally necessary with only two inches of lift. However, uh, being a brand new vehicle, it does alleviate some CV axle angle, um, which is what they were hoping for. Um, just to kind of prolong the life of the CV boots and whatnot. So anyway, just plugging along. All right, so here we are um, with their 285 on the front and their Icon wheel. So the suspension arms are still loose. So I need to go through and tighten the upper and lower A arm bolts and then the lower strut bolt. And then we can move on to the rear. All right, so we got the front suspension bits all tightened up. It's time to move on to the rear. So let's get her jacked up and on stands and uh, get the wheels off. We'll see what we gotta do here. So in the rear, we've got uh, the car supported on jack stands here. Um, in order to lower the axle far enough to get the spacers in there, we need to disconnect the sway bar links and loosen the suspension arms. And we'll disconnect the shock bolt on the bottom is way easier than the top. And uh, yeah, no big deal. Lower the axle down. It's a coil spring spacer that's gonna go in here and uh, bolt it all back together. So let's start loosening stuff up and we'll show you how it goes. And now I've got all my upper lower link arm bolts loose, track bar bolts loose and shocks unbolted on the bottom. We'll slowly lower the jack down, paying careful attention to the brake hoses and uh, Get those coil springs popped out of there. See if we can get some spacers in it. All right, so you bolt your spacer up um, in the factory coil spring perch location. There's an oval hole there. You're able to drop the bolt down through with the nut and then uh, we'll get a wrench on the top and my little impact gun on the bottom will tighten these up. One on either side. Put the coil springs back in with the uh, bump stops in place and keep moving along. All right, get your coil springs back in place with the bump stop. And then it's important as you jack the car um, jack the axle back up to make sure that you get the upper portion of the springs located in the perch as well as the bottom of the spring located in the perch. So um, you see the coil spring wraps around in dead ends and it's got this definitive step here where it goes. Make sure that's locked in. And then up top, um, just stick my hands in there, but yeah, make sure that that is also lined up. up. All right, once you've got your coil springs um, seated correctly, then you're gonna go ahead, put everything back together and make sure to leave your upper lower control arm bolts and track bar bolt all loose until you get the vehicle on its way down the ground and then we'll do a final tighten on those. Again, making sure the bushings are all centered in their range of travel so as to not cause any premature wear. And boom, 
What a good looking truck, man. So rough country, two inch front, one inch rear lift spacer kit, um, Icon 17 inch wheels with the 285 70R17 Nitto Terra Grappler. I haven't tried turning it yet. I don't know if it's gonna rub. Um, these are tires and wheels they had on their previous Forerunner. Um, if you watch all of my videos, you might recognize them. They, uh, we just lifted it not here too long ago. It was a magnetic gray one that we did the Bilstein 5100s on the front with uh set on the like second perch for an inch and three quarter a lift so um but they decided to upgrade and man what an upgrade this thing is beautiful what a nice truck so we'll uh fire it up turn the wheel see if we need to do any clearancing so the tire touches like right here this flap like kind of floppy at the bottom if that thing was held back just that tiny bit it wouldn't touch that flap at all there's room in the front um, it looks tight but it does turn and clear so I think we just need to do this if we can come up with a way to hold that flap back that little bit problem is then on the outside it like opens the gap here so I guess I'll talk to them and see if they want to remove the flap or if they want to try and do something with it for them themselves but. a little unfair to give a stance um height here uh the vehicle's sitting on the downhill slope that is my driveway but uh man what an improvement that thing looks so tough what a great looking truck